All right, we're back again. And this time, more complicated than ever. All right, it's a lot of stuff, so I'm gonna get right into it and go as fast as I can because I know that no one even watches this, so whatever. I see who views it, there's only like five views a week. It's ridiculous. There we go. All right, the moon. We're doing everything about the moon today. Chapter 9.3, lot of vocab. So this first sheet is just your vocab. And then the next sheet is the vocab of the phases of the moon. I would either now or later copy that part down and maybe not the whole definitions, but just the, the names of the phases. And then you can draw a little picture next to them. So what they sort of appear like, that'll probably help you on the test when I ask you those questions. Pro tip. Yeah, buddy. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. My meme, not really a meme, but like, hey, bro, nice sandcastle there. Let me come get a better look. Only big brains will understand that. You should understand that by the end if you don't already. Right. Uh, here we go. Chapter three essential questions. There's three. I don't care which one you pick to write down or answer. It doesn't matter to me. So why does the moon appear to change shape? Why, what causes solar and lunar eclipses? And how, how do the sun? And the, how does the sun and the moon affect the tides? The main one is I really want you to know, I want you to know all of them. You're gonna have to know them all for the test, but the answer is like one or three. Those are probably the bigger ones to at least answer. Uh, number two should be pretty easy. Here we go. All right, so this is not on the test. This is just for funsies, just because I just remember, just think about like Hunter or something asking questions, which I miss very much. Um, like where the moon came from, how it was made, just like earth and stuff like that. There's two big theories that um, are prevalent is the giant impact where uh, an object hit into earth and it broke apart and then formed the, uh, the moon. Um, the only problem with that one is that when they took samples on the moon, the moon's soil is almost identical to the particles that are on earth. So they think that the moon and earth sort of formed at the same time from the same sort of stuff. That's the second one. But you don't need to know that. That's just in case you can look that up and research that if you want to find more. Keep it going. All right. Oh, yeah, this is my fun little thing. And a lot of people obviously don't believe the moon's even real. One in five people. They did like a little poll. One in five people think the moon is like a hologram in the sky. I don't know. Can you prove it wrong? Hmm? Can you prove it wrong? You never know. And that uh, there was no just saying the moon landing was faked. You know? Help me prove it right or wrong. Remember, we got to prove things. You can't just listen to what other people say. Listen to your parents. Um, let's say, do your chores. Prove it, mom. Prove it. <laughs> prove the chores exist. <laughs> You're going to get smacked. All right. So um, first, we're going to just talk about the appearance of the moon. We see the moon all different ways because, obviously, of the light that's reflected on the moon from the sun. Now, just like Earth, there's always part, half the moon that is lit up and half the moon that is dark, just like Earth, because whatever side is facing the sun is also the side that's light, just like Earth, all right? But there is a dark side, and I put that in quotations for a reason, all right? Oh, what the heck, all right? Obviously, when it was a full moon, it almost seems like uh, it could be like daylight outside in the middle of the night. It's really cool, all right? The different uh, shapes that we see in the sky of the moon, of the different reflections of light, are called the different phases, all right? That's a vocab word. Phases are motions of the moon around Earth caused by that. All right, so there's two sides to the moon, two sides. And I'm going to sort of decode this for you. I'll get my little laser pointer. Actually, I'm going to get the draw thing out. I know Anyala, if she's watching, what's this do? Wants me to have my little drawer out. I'll pull the drawer out, all right? So I don't know if you've always noticed, but the moon always looks the same, always. If you ever see it in pictures from Earth or if you see it in the sky, it always has the same craters in the exact same places always and there's a very special reason for that that i'm going to get into in the next slide but for right now you just need to know that let's see 
It's like, it's not even real. I kid, there's a reason why, and we'll explain the next slide, understand the sides of the, so the side that always faces Earth, there's a side that always faces Earth, it's called the near side, all right? And then there's a side that never faces Earth, and they call it the dark side, but they don't like calling it the dark side because it's not always dark, depending on where the sun is. It's called the far side, all right? Near and far side. So the near side, just like this weird, creepy thing, is always facing us, always. And then there's a reason for that, and the reason's on the next slide. So there, we never see the far side of the moon. Hmm. It's like a conspiracy. All right. How do I get to the next slide? Pop. The lines stay there. Oh, that's awful. Go away. Go away. All right. Uh, let's draw some more. All right. So the motion of the moon is why we only see one side. And just like this little diagram here, the, it, the moon rotates and revolves just like the earth rotates and revolves around the sun. But the special thing about it is it's in perfect sync so that the rotation of the moon and its revolution work together to force the one side of the moon to always face us, all right? So the moon rotates and revolves. You have to know just like Earth. Um, it has an axis just like all rotating things do. Um, day of the moon. So the revolution and rotation are in perfect sync. And it's really, it's weird how it's, it's scarily perfect, but, and it takes 29.5 days to completely go all the way around. And we'll get to that later. All right. So the reason why we can only see the near side of the moon is because of its rotation and revolution are in perfect sync that it's always, one side is always facing us. Only one side. All right, we gotta go next slide. Pop, clear, all drawings. All right, and then this leads us to the dark side or the ugly side of the moon. And it's like, yeah, I would say in the last side it says like it's almost ugly. So that's why it's hiding from us because it's the other side is ugly. So the picture on the right is the far side of the moon. And the reason they can get that picture is obviously there's satellites in between us and the sun and they can get behind it while it's full. So you can see from the picture that the one we see normally is on the left. You can see the dark spots. That's from basins of lava, actually, from long ago. And on the right, there's tons. Let me get the spotlight so much easier. Maybe I like this one. No, the laser's better. There's tons of craters. And obviously, if that's the far, the, the far side is always facing out, remember the moon is a big shield for us from all the debris and asteroids in space. So the moon is literally using its far side as a shield for all these asteroids. That's why there's so many craters on the far side. All right. By the way, and this is very bad to admit, that's the first time in my entire life that I knew there was even a picture of the far side of the moon. That's really bad. All right. Now we're still gonna talk about motion a little bit more, all right? So just remember the moon is always, half of it's always lit. Even when we can't see it, it the sun, it's still half lit, all right? The phases of the, phase of the moon, oh, I don't like how my spotlight always disappears. The phase of the moon depends on how much of the sunlit side we can see from Earth, all right? Let me see if I'm missing anything here. You do have to know it's always half lit. So if I ask a question on the test, like uh, what, what, what phase is there no light on the moon at all? And then you say that's false, there's nothing. Um, unless there's a lunar eclipse, obviously, um, then that's a very rare circumstance and we're gonna talk about that later too. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, here we go. But Mr. Oh, I just. But Mr. G, what if the moon is behind the Earth? Then how is it fully lit, like a full moon? The full moon's behind Earth, and how is it fully lit? Good question. Totally anonymous stranger, imaginary student. 
And the reason is that we have a full moon, even though the moon is behind us in the, the in front of the behind us and behind the sun, is because the revolution of the moon is tilted. So when the shadow comes through from the sun, it's either above or below, so we can still get a full moon. All right? It's because it's revol like our axis is tilted, its revolution around us is tilted. And that allows us to see it. If it was not tilted, if it was flat, we would have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse every month because it would completely block out the sun at one point and completely block, we would completely block out the sun from it at one point as well. But they're much more rare because of that tilt. If I ask you why are uh, solar eclipses and lunar eclipses so rare, you can say because the revolution of the moon is at a tilt, so it's harder for it to line up correctly. All right, here's your first Ted and Moby video on the phases of the moon. Hopefully it works. It's um, not what it looks like. To Tim and Moby, I've heard the moon waxes and wanes. What does that mean? From Devin. Hey Devin, here on Earth, the moon doesn't always look like a perfect circle in the sky. Its appearance changes over time. It waxes or grows and wanes or shrinks. The moon goes through a cycle of different shapes or phases over the course of about one month. In fact, the whole concept of months is based on this cycle. Believe it or not, shadows have nothing to do with the moon's phases. You might be picturing the Earth-Moon-Sun system like this, but if everything were all flat like this, you'd get a solar eclipse every time the moon was here, and a lunar eclipse every time it was here. In reality, eclipses are pretty rare. Okay, let's see how it really looks. The moon's orbit around the Earth is tilted about five degrees from our orbit around the sun. So, in most cases, any shadows cast by the Earth and moon completely miss each other. Now that we've cleared that up, let's see the phases in action. Like the Earth, half the moon's surface is always lit by the sun, and half is in the dark. But the amount of that bright side that we can see changes as the moon moves through its orbit. When the moon is directly between the Earth and Sun, forming a straight line, the entire bright side is facing away from us, so we see nothing at all, or at best, a dark disk. This phase is called the new moon. Right, as you move along in your orbit, more and more of your bright side becomes visible to me. In other words, the moon is waxing. Phases where you can see less than half of the bright side are called crescent moons. When the moon has completed one quarter of its orbit around Earth, we can see half of its illuminated side. Astronomers call this the first quarter moon, but it's more commonly known as a half moon. Once you can see more than half, it's called a gibbous moon. Gibbous. When the moon and the sun are on opposite sides of the Earth, the entire bright side of the moon is facing toward us, so we see a shiny, full moon. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, as the moon continues its orbit, we see less and less of its lit side. It passes through the waning gibbous phases, and when it completes three quarters of its orbit, the other half of the bright side becomes visible as the third quarter moon. Next, it passes through the waning crescent phases, and finally, the moon comes back around to where it started, and we're back to a new moon. The amount of time between one new moon and the next is called a lunar month, and it's about 29.5 days. The time it takes for the moon to make one complete orbit around Earth is actually a bit less, about 27.3 days. Well, remember, while the moon travels around the Earth, the Earth is moving around the sun. So when the moon finishes one complete circuit, the Earth has moved quite a bit. 
the three bodies now form an angle instead of a straight line, so we can still see a crescent moon. It takes the moon about two days to catch up and get into new moon position again. Okay, now we can finally put these costumes away. Oh no. That's no moon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. All right, but so there's eight different phases there. All right. And we're going to go through them all. I'm going to go through them quickly because I know this is a lot. But uh, so you can pause whenever you'd like. Uh, eight different phases. I'm going to go through them all. Um, an entire moon cycle lasts about 29.5 days once it catches up, like he said. Um, and that's actually how they actually made the months around that. Um, that's why they're all around that amount of days, give or take. Um, it would, like I said, it'd be smart to go back to slide three before we go over this and at least write down the names of all eight phases and maybe draw a little picture. If not, maybe you could do it off these next couple. All right, let's go through the different phases that we see from Earth. All right, there's eight different ones, and it goes like this in a cycle over a period of a month. Phase one, new moon. New moon's the one that is between us and the sun. And because it's between us and the sun, the illuminated side, illuminated means lit, hopefully you know that, is facing the sun. We can't see that side, so we just get the dark side of the moon. So we can't see it, so it's new. That's what they call a new moon, all right? That's this one right here, number one. I'm gonna be using the same diagram throughout the whole thing. All right, next one. After phase one, it slowly comes this way and it becomes a waxing crescent. We said crescent is like a C-shaped, curved shape, all right? And it's waxing because it's getting bigger. As it's going around to the other side of Earth, it will be getting bigger, waxing even bigger. Mr. G, how do I know if I just look in the sky if it's getting bigger or not? Good question. You can easily look in the sky and figure out if it's a waxing one by just looking at what side is lit. Obviously, you can see this is the right side of the moon, all right? If it's on the right side, it's waxing, it's getting bigger. If it's on the left side, it's waning or getting smaller, and we'll go over that, all right? So anytime you see it on the right side, it's still getting bigger, all right? But waxing means getting bigger. All right, first quarter, like you said, 90 degrees later, it means one quarter of the way through the entire lunar cycle. Um, it also means it's like, he also said, it's very much known as a half moon. It's when half is shown and you know, it's the first quarter cause it's waxing, getting bigger and it's on the right side. Wait, phase four, go keep them going. Waxing gibbous. It's a little bit more. It's still on the right side. So it's waxing. It's getting bigger. Gibbous means that it's more than half, but less than full. So it's not a full yet, but it's more than the, the half. We'll keep going. Full moon. It's where number five back here, it's on the back side of Earth. So we can see the lit part fully. Um, this is the moon we get to see and love and know all the time. It is the halfway point. Um, it is possible to have more than two full moons a month because a lot of times the lunar cycle is shorter than the actual number of days in the month, so sometimes they can give you two full moons. It is possible. Next. So after it hits a full moon, it's gonna start getting smaller. So after a full moon, it immediately starts being a waning. And before the first step is waning gibbous, where it's still more than, less than full, but not half yet. So it's a gibbous because there's a, still a lot of moon there. I and mean, then now, remember, waning is on the left side. So we know this is going to be keep getting smaller. Waning on left side, smaller. Then we're over to here. Number seven, this is third quarter. And the only difference you're going to know between third and first quarter, because they're both half moons, third quarter, the light's on the left side. First quarter, the, right, the light's on the right side. So you just have to know that the first quarter is on the way around, it's on the right side, it's on the waxing side. Third quarter, half moon, waning side. It's getting smaller. And last but not least, 
Phase eight is once again a crescent, crescent, but it's on the other side. It's on the left side. You have, that's the that's the only way you're going to be able to tell the difference between the crescents, the quarters, and the gibbuses is which side is it on? Left, waning, right, waxing. All right, and then after that, it goes right back into new moon and starts all over again. This next video is something you guys can do at home if you have a ping pong ball, a ball, you can just stick a pen or anything into it. Um, a light, a lamp, just take the shade off, turn the lights off, all the other lights off in the room, make it a dark room, and you can show yourself like you, uh, the different phases of the moon by spinning around. Uh, we were going to do this in class, but here's something I'll show you real quick. I'm going to skip through. Cool activity with you. That, well, that's skip, 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 and as you're doing that, but it doesn't look like anything there, but in your I point of view, of it'll look like this. So yes. this is your new moon when you're facing, it's facing the sun, and as in you go thing, around. You can see what I am seeing from Earth. We call this new moon. No, she's when it's talk new about moon, it. we look up at the sky, we can't see the moon. It's there, but the side that's reflecting sunlight is away from You can us. start to see the waxing now crescent. Now slowly make the moon orbit to my left. I can begin to see a tiny sliver of that light inside. We call that a crescent moon. As the moon keeps orbiting, we can see more and more of that light inside. We see half. Of now the that's light half. Light, that's the first quarter. Which is a quarter moon. In this case, a first quarter moon. As we keep orbiting, we see almost the whole light inside. We call that a gibbous moon. Then when we now notice that the the moon's already always half lit. It's just the how much we can see changes as it rotates around us. You can see the entire light and half of the moon. That's a full moon. Full moon's on the opposite as side. As the moon continues in its orbit, we begin this moon, but this time the light is on the opposite now, side. Now the gibbous is waning because it's getting smaller. It's on the left side. Then your third quarter. Then another quarter moon. And then your waning exact. crescent. And then you're back to a new moon and you've been canceled. We're skipping, you know. All right, you can do that at home. Um, also, uh, I uh, there's supposed to be a link down here. I will post a link in the Google Classroom. You can play around with this as well. It's a little simulator. You can move the Earth man and your perspective through the 29-day cycle, and as you spin it around, you can see what it looks like on Earth. Like we don't see the moon during the day or the night and you can keep turning it around and you'll start to see it. You can see a sliver of it, the waxing crescent in the sky there. And you can see its position uh, versus the sun, the moon and the earth and the time of day when you can see it and you can play around with that. But I'm not gonna waste your time right now since we've talked so much about it already. And the, that's down there. All right, so we went through all the phases. Now we're gonna talk about eclipses. So there's two types of eclipses, solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. Before I get into that, an eclipse is anytime there's a partial or total blocking of the sun between a couple of objects, all right? And remember, they're rare because of the tilt of the moon, all right? So the solar eclipse is when the moon blocks the sun to Earth. The lunar eclipse is when Earth blocks the sun to the moon, all right? Solar eclipse is the one where you have to wear protective goggles to look in the sky, just because basically, duh, you're not supposed to look at the sun. It can obviously hurt your eyes, cause very bad retinal damage, that is permanent. Do not look in the sun, all right? Lunar eclipse, obviously it's a reflection of the sun, it's not gonna hurt your eyes. Um, it's when we cast a shadow, Earth casts a shadow on the moon. All right. Okay. I don't think do I need to talk about that. Yeah, I will. All right. So once again, the solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes directly 
between Earth and the sun. It has to be so precise. And even, I don't know if you remember the last solar eclipse, it only, you can see it right here, there's only a very small portion of it that has what we call a total eclipse, and that's where the moon completely covers the sun. Um, it does not happen all over the world. It only usually happens in a very narrow window as the moon is going in between the sun and earth. And that's called the umbra. The umbra is always the darkest part of the shadow. And then the, the you can still get the partial eclipse. And the partial eclipses are the prenumbra, which is the shadow that's not as dark. And those are both cat words. It can only happen, obviously, during a new moon, uh, a solar eclipse, because the moon has to be between us and the sun, and those, it's always new moon position. All right. The other one is the lunar eclipse. So often looks like a bloody moon. It, it gets very dark. Uh, and that's usually because we don't entirely cover the whole moon with our umbra. Um, it's the exact opposite, and the moon's on the other side, and it lines up perfectly. Um, obviously, once again, the umbra is the darkest part, and then the penumbra is the less shaded part of the shadow. All right. Obviously, once again, safety for solar eclipses. This is not on the test. You don't know, have to remember this, but it should be common sense. Do not look into the sun whatsoever, even in a solar eclipse. Like I said, solar retinopathy, I got a little bit when I was a kid from staring at the sun too long. It really can lead to permanent blind spots and distortions. Like you might think, oh, I look in the sun, nothing happened. But a lot of times it doesn't pop up for like four to six hours. And then you're like, oh, no. All right. Don't be unsmart and never stare in the sun. Be like Melania. Wear your shades. They're just not indoors. Uh, people that wear sunglasses indoors are sort of creeps. All right. Oh, wait, I went the wrong way. All right, next, Tim and Moby. We're introducing one more thing about the moon, and then we're done. It's a short one. Moby? Dear Tim and Moby, I heard that the moon controls the tides. Is that true? From Jackie. The steady rise and fall of the ocean water levels is called the tide. Tides are caused by the pull of gravity between the Earth, Moon, and Sun. As you know, gravity is the force that pulls everything in the universe towards everything else. Even though the Moon is much smaller than the Sun, the Moon's pull has a more pronounced effect on the Earth's oceans because it's closer than the Sun. On the side of the Earth that's facing the Moon, the pull of gravity causes oceans to bulge outward. On the other side of the Earth, the Moon's pull on solid ground causes the oceans to bulge there too. The Earth rotates on its axis, and so this bulge is constantly changing location. Where the bulge is bigger, it's high tide. Where the water doesn't bulge, it's low tide. The moon's orbit around the Earth also causes tidal changes. Most places get two high tides and two low tides each day. Hey, tides are important, Moby. The energy of rising and falling tides can be used to power machinery and make electricity. Well, the ocean is strong and unpredictable, so tidal power isn't easy to harness. But it is a clean energy source that doesn't produce much pollution. Hey, looks like a tide's coming in. Uh, it's late. I think we should go. The moon is not laughing at you. Well, you stop threatening the moon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, main topic, obviously, tides. Um, a couple key points was that it, the tides are a rise and fall of the ocean waters that happens uh, high and low every 12.5 hours, about half the day. So, that means that every six hours there's a high and then another six hours there's a low and then it repeats. So you get two highs, tides, and two low tides per day, about, right? Um, and they are the results of, you have to know that there's two of each. All this stuff I'm telling you is going to be on the test. Um, the tides are a result of the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, all right? The sun and the moon, they both do it. 
It has a picture of like significant high and low tides. All right, so we already learned, this is stuff from last week, hopefully you paid attention, that the sun has a ton of gravity because it weighs a lot, I'm not a weighs, has a lot of mass, excuse me. And so, but the moon's gravity has a much, you know, more prominent effect on our tides. Why? Why? Hmm, because even though the sun is 400 times bigger, like, you know, the moon is like 400 times closer. Like the sun's really far away like really far away. It's very hard to tell that from all the pictures you see on like Google and, and just understanding it because it seems like it's like right there, but it is huge and very, very far away. And we already learned, remember, it's not just how much mass something has. You have to be close to each other for gravity to really affect it. And because the moon doesn't have mass, but it makes up because of how close it is. All right. So, Whichever side is facing the moon is where the tide bulges, bugle, I really messed that one up, bugle out, bulges out and creates the high tide. And, and then also on the opposite side of the side that's facing the moon, just like the picture down here. Moon's here, high tides are on the close side and opposite side, low tides are where it's not being pulled. And then as the moon goes around and the earth rotates, it moves, all right? Just like in the picture here. The earth rotates and then the moon still holds the high tide and it moves around. Uh, la, 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 la. I said it's bulge around here, right? The sun does still affect it, just not as much as the moon, since it's so close. The sun does still affect it, and we're gonna talk about that soon when we talk about the different types of tides. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and we're also gonna, I'm gonna have a little, little video about really, in your mind, thinking about how close the moon and the sun are. Um, in like real life terms. I wish we could do this in class and we have a fun little toilet paper project, but bleh. All right. The sun and the moon are really, really far away. We'll do that now. Perfect. All right. All right. This first video is just explaining the distance between the moon and Earth. That's it. Uh, representing the Earth. Okay. And this represents, what do you think? Yes. Now, uh, our first uh, challenge is how far apart uh, are they? Roughly. Okay. Uh, I guess maybe about that far. Maybe. About that far? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Roughly? Uh, yeah. Yeah. About like that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this far? It's like here. Mm -hmm. Right there. Alright, alright. Let's, let's, uh. I'm just gonna stand here. Okay. Can I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. See what hands I say here. Okay. These are some images I found on a Google image search for the Earth and the Moon. Diagrams that are not to scale are pretty common. And I understand why we make them. So you can show the detail without showing all that uninteresting space in between. But they can have a problematic effect on learning because they give people the wrong idea about the relative proximities of things. Now, if we want So what he's saying there is there's a lot of stuff on Google is fake. It's not like drawn to scale because if it was actually drawn to scale, it's really hard to see the moon and earth in the same picture. It doesn't come out as good as the fake ones because of how far away they are. I want to talk about the distance between the earth and the moon. Yeah, it's actually... <laughs> Seriously. It's about here. Really far. Think about this. It takes light one second to go from the earth to the moon. It takes eight minutes for light to travel to the sun and four years to go to our nearest star. I don't know. Then consider that there are a hundred billion stars in that's our good. galaxy. Eh, that's the point. All right, here's another one. This shows the relativity between Earth, the moon, and then we're gonna add the sun, this one. I'm gonna have to skip through this, I don't know. To really understand eclipses, you have to understand the scale of the Earth, the moon, and the sun system. To start with, the diameter of the moon is one quarter of the diameter of the Earth. That means that four moons would fit across this 20 centimeter diameter model of the Earth. One thing you haven't seen in that textbook, however, is the real scale distance between the Earth and the Moon. 
it's so hard to show in real life because of how truly vast and far it is. You'll see that the moon is 30 Earth diameters. Away. We see these pictures and think it's so close, but like that little tiny thing is so far away. That the moon be exactly lined up with the sun to make a total solar eclipse. The sun. Yeah, like you know how hard it is to line this up? 10 meters in diameter, the size of a three story building, and over a kilometer away. It is that far away, and the moon has to perfectly line up with the sun to get a solar eclipse. That little tiny thing has to line up with that skyscraper all that way away. It's very hard. That's why you can also understand why the moon's gravity pulls a little bit differently than the sun's because of how far away it is. All right, the last two things we need to know are the different types of tides. Spring tide is the strong tide. That means it's really high tide and really, really low tide. The differences between the high and the low tide are the greatest. Um, these only happen during a full moon and a new moon when the sun and the moon is lined up in a straight line. Um, the full moon's a pretty strong tide, but the stronger of the two is when there's a new moon and the sun on the same side. It's almost like a tug of war, and if the sun and the new moon are on the same side pulling it, it's a, even a little bit more strong than the one that's a full moon on the other side. Oh, I went backwards again. Oh, no, I didn't. All right, and then the neap tide. Neap, neap, neap. <laughs> the neap tide um, is the tide with the lowest difference. So it's not a very strong tide. Um, and be, it's because the, the moon is pulling one direction this way, and then the sun's pulling this direction, this way. And they almost sort of cancel each other out, so the tide's not really strong. So it's very small differences. That's it. I think that's everything. Oh, yeah, here's a little spring tide. It's a large difference. Neat tide, small difference. And then this one is the, sh the largest, right? One on this side. I. All right, and then you should be able to answer like a lot of questions just from looking at the tides of the certain types of month. So which are the spring and neat tides? Remember the spring tides are the ones with the biggest difference. So this one's very high and this one's very low. This one's very high and this one's very low. So these two, April 8th and April 23rd are spring tides, all right? And then we can even go further. Whichever one's usually stronger is the one that's a new moon. So this one is higher and lower. So this one's the new moon. This one's the full moon, probably ish around, and because I, I spread up the dates out here, so they're all spread out throughout a full lunar cycle. And then these two are very low, so they'd be they'd be quarters. I don't. Uh, so if this is the full moon, then this would be waning. So this would be quarter three, and then new moon, and then that would be quarter one. So I can figure out the the type of moon just by looking at the tides fairly close so you should for the test i might give you one of these you have to know which one's a spring tide which one's a neap tide and maybe which one's the closest to a new moon meaning which one has the biggest spring tide and also yeah uh, may 16th there's going to be a smiley face moon with jupiter and venus and i think that's pretty cool is that it? Yep. All right, we're done. Let me stop. 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 Let me out. Let me out. <laughs>